Okay. Well, hello. Hello. To start off with, would you like to say your name and where you are? Yes, my name is Pascal Coutonsou and I am in Arndal in the southern part of Norway. Okay. And the first question is, who are you? Who are you as a human being? And that can be your passions, qualities about yourself, your values, whatever you'd like. Well, that's a difficult question because uh, there are so many things to answer. Um, uh, well, I'm a woman and I'm 44 years old. Um, uh, sometimes I wonder uh, um, if I'm French or if I'm Norwegian because I've been living in Norway for uh, 25 years now and I was 20 years old when I left France. So uh, when people ask me where I'm from, I, I'm not sure anymore if I'm really totally French or if I'm Norwegian at all. Maybe a mix of all that. But I think that's, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, what my nationality is, in a way. My nationality is still French, but uh, I'm not totally French. Um, oh. Still. Um, I have a um, boy who's 13 years old, and uh, I now live on my own with him. And I am a Gestalt therapist, and that's quite a big part of my life for the time being. Uh, as I have uh, started my own practice uh, here in Arndal, and um, I'm trying to actually live of it full time. So I'm building up the practice for the time being and using quite a lot of energy doing that. Um, but it's actually very exciting to be my own boss. I'm, um, I think we could say that I'm, there's an entrepreneur living inside me. So. Um, and also an uh, independent woman. Um, and apart from that, well, um, uh, I love to knit, I love to read, as you can maybe see from the books behind me. And um, I, uh, I'm interested in um, um, a lot of things like also giftedness, for example. That's, uh, that's something that's been a topic that's been interesting me for the past couple of years both as a gestalt therapist and as a person mm -hmm. um, and uh, also i have an interest in uh, you could call it the supernatural but maybe not the supernatural but maybe um, otherworldly things and i'm uh, using tarot for example to uh, do readings to people and things like that. i'm a bit curious about many things actually i like to explore new things I like to learn things. I'm interested in composting, for example. I, uh, I'm curious about things that maybe don't look like they have anything in common, but in the end, I always find the, the pattern that connects everything together in a way, at least for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, that's me in a nutshell. I, I'm curious because I also have sort of my own bicultural experience. What parts of you are French and what parts of you are Norwegian, how you mm. understand those different parts. You don't have to answer that if you don't want to. I'm just yes, wondering, are there central parts of you as well that are you know, core values or something like that? Yes, that's a very interesting thing. Um, I think that um, there are some core values that are more French, like, um, um, oh, but, but they have these core values have have evolved a little bit with me uh, becoming Norwegian in a way. So uh, I have some views on education and how a child should behave, for example, how my child, how I would like him to behave. Um, but I also have um, adapted my parenting style to the Norwegian culture and not kept the French way of being a parent, for example, or at least the French way that was like 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, things have been evolving since uh, since I left France, of course. So, and I think that um, the professional part of me uh, is probably very Norwegian because I've never been working in France. So um, mm. uh, I don't have the, um, I don't have the working culture of France in me. So I'm very much, sometimes when I hear about people working until six, seven o'clock in the evening, 
in France on, on a weekday. That's that's just totally strange for me in a way because my my day stops at the latest. The latest is really six, but usually it stops at four o'clock in the in the afternoon. So um, yeah. So some things are there. Are, some things are. I would say that maybe there is a core of me which is French, but which has been transformed a little bit with the Norwegian culture and maybe sometimes a lot, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. And I mean, without putting labels on it um, as French or Norwegian, what would you say are your core values? Um, yes, there are so many. <laughs> no, my core values is, um, uh, I'm, I'm genuinely interested in other people. So uh, um, altruism is one of my core values. And, uh, but I would say also authenticity, being true to myself as well as being true to others and, and really being in um, uh, coherent with myself, which is in a way very gestaltist, this um, coherence uh, thing. So, um, but I would say also, um, Taking the taking the time to to live, taking the time to be, that's one of my core values. Also, I don't know if it's very French, but um, um, but that's something that's it's probably something that came with with the time. Um, mm -hmm. But if we think about the um, the French values, which are uh, fraternity, liberty, and uh, equality, or brotherhood more than fraternity, mm -hmm. you can say in English then I do think that equality is one thing that I'm interested in and which maybe is the reason why I've chosen Gestalt therapy and not another kind of uh, psychotherapy approach, for example, or, or another kind of um, approach to the human being. When I was a teacher, I, I don't think I liked very much the, the hierarchy of the teacher being the expert and the pupil being the, um, being the one who has to take in everything. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, liberty is also, of course, a very important um, core value for me. Um, I think it's it's probably one of one of the values that drives me the most, and that steers my life the most. Yes, mm. and brotherhood. Well, I think it's altruism for me. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm an only child. I don't understand that brotherhood thing so well. <laughs> So one of the first things you said was that you are a woman. So I'm wondering how you understand or experience yourself within your gender or as a woman. Hmm. Uh, that's a difficult question because I don't think that I'm. Um, I mean, I'm a woman, but I don't. I don't really. I don't really think myself in opposition as men in a way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am. I'm a woman. That's that's who I am. But it's uh, so I don't really I don't really think every day that oh, that I'm a woman and that's why I do things this way or that's why I am this way or um, so I I don't know I I'm not, I'm not sure I can answer that question actually I'm not sure I have an answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. um, you also mentioned your age. So I'm wondering how you are experiencing that age or this time of your life or aging in general. Um, I love my age. Uh, I would never go back in time for anything in the world. Um, um, no, I love, I love growing old, actually. Uh, it's not always uh, fun to discover new white hair, but, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a part of life and sometimes um, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't like to live forever anyway. I mean, when I hear about people trying to uh, do research on methods to have us live forever, I don't think that's something that I would like. So aging is a normal part of life for me. And uh, I think I'm quite okay with it, at least when I'm now 44. And I'm really looking forward to what's coming in my life in the future, actually. So I think it's very nice to be 44. I still have many things that I want to do and that I want to try. Um, and I see that I still have the time to do it when I'm now 44. Um, but I'm also very happy that um, what I think has been the toughest part of my life is behind me. And that I'm, uh, I'm now at 44, I'm, 
I'm coming to a quieter and calmer uh, moment in my life when I can more um, enjoy the time to experience things and to meet people and to do the things that I want to do. Also. Okay. And what would you say about your power and your privilege? How do you sort of understand that? in relation to, I guess, society or to the larger world? I mean, how do you understand yourself in your power and your privilege? Um, that's also a difficult question for me. Um, I would say that um, I consider myself as being quite a privileged person. Living in Norway, which is one of the richest countries in the world, um, I, really, I really have an easy, um, everyday life, I would say. I'm not lacking of anything, um, even though things are not always easy. I live with the difficulties of life just like anybody can experience them. But I have a certain security due to the security that the state is providing us here in Norway um, regarding health care, for example, and, and other things. I mean, I know that things would really have to be very, very tough and really out of control if I suddenly happen to live in the street or, or not have any food on my table. So in this regard, I feel that I'm very privileged. Um, I think also I'm privileged because I've had the, the opportunity to study um, as much as I wanted to, and I can still do that if I want to as well. So I'm an educated person and um, I consider that a privilege as well. Um, the power, yeah, that's a good question. I'm not, I wouldn't say that I consider myself as a powerful person this way. Um, but still I see that as a Gestalt therapist, I have the power to, um, and, and also when I was a teacher, I had the power to plant the little seeds in other people's life that they could go on um, growing if they wanted to, to make a flower or some kind of plant to come out of it and something beautiful if they want to. And I think that's, uh, that's quite powerful actually when, uh, when you think about it, even mm -hmm. though I don't have control about what's happening after I've planted the seed, but um, it means that I have a possibility to transmit things to people. And that's probably where I would say that my power lies in what I can give others and what I can share with others that can be um, good for them or that or, or not also because power mm -hmm. is also about maybe sometimes giving things that you that are not good to other people so um, yeah okay. does it make any sense yeah yeah it does very much so I'm also wondering how you came to Gestalt how did you find it how did it find you um, I came to Gestalt when I, how many years ago, maybe um, 15 years ago, something like that. Um, I had seen a psychologist a um, couple of times in my life, um, never done a very thorough long time therapy, but I had had some, uh, some sessions with different therapists when I experienced tough times and needed to uh, work them through. And at some point, um, going to a regular psychologist and just talking about things that had happened in the past was not enough for me anymore because I just, it was okay to talk about the past, but I, I could never find the way to, to change things, to change the way I was doing things. Um, so it might have to do with who I met uh, or I mean the psychologists that were in front of me but these people were at least not able to help me um, see the patterns and help me not keep on reproducing them and that's when I decided that I needed to find something different and I'm not sure how it happened but uh, I did some research and then I happened to uh, hear about gestalt therapy and went to a gestalt therapist and I was very happy with them. Um, I think from the first session, we used a lot of creativity. She asked me to draw and to do things that were not 
for me, ordinary when you meet uh, someone who's doing therapy. And I like that, that angle and that way of doing things. And it helped me, it helped me overcome some things. And then I realized, um, then I went for, for more sessions with another therapist and it really helped me um, get back to who I am actually discover again who I am and who I want to be and be more empowered in myself somehow. Hmm. So what is it that you found in Gestalt? Do you have a favorite aspect of it, a favorite part, a piece that you work with? Awareness is definitely what um, what seduced me with Gestalt uh, because I studied for one year um, family therapy and systemic practice mm -hmm. and um, during that one year I was then going to uh, seeing a gestalt therapist and I wasn't sure she was this therapist was telling me that I it would probably be a good idea for me to study gestalt therapy um, but I wasn't sure and then when I studied family therapy I realized that they weren't using their awareness as my therapist was doing with me and that one part, um, or at least they weren't, it's not that they weren't using their awareness, but there wasn't as much focus on awareness as in Gestalt therapy. And I realized that for me to become a therapist, if I was to become a therapist, I needed to really use, exploit that part of me that was my awareness um, on, in a very conscious way, not mm -hmm. just use it because I'm, I have an intuition that it's a good idea to use it but really use it in a, in a conscious way. And I think, and that's what made me uh, actually quit the family therapy studies and, and instead start Gestalt therapy um, education because I, I wanted that, that part. That was, um, yeah, that's really what, what caught my attention. And, and I think that's what, that's what makes gestalt therapy in a way not to not to to be reducing things but in a way when you use awareness you're doing gestalt that's if there is one only one thing that you can if you strip gestalt therapy from everything and and one thing that stands for me the core would be awareness mm -hmm. hmm. so what challenges have you run up against um either in the gestalt world or in another part of your life that you'd like to mention Hmm, there are so many. <laughs> um, well, uh, the challenge of uh, changing country was uh, was quite of uh, quite of a challenge, actually. Even though it's something that I willingly did and that I chose myself, and not for uh, not because I met someone that I fell in love with, like many people do, but really I moved because I wanted to, and I was curious about Norway. So, uh, but that was uh, that was a big challenge to uh, adjust to society, to new society, and adjust to new people, and also um, get to know um, the Norwegians who sometimes don't don't appear very open uh, like maybe the uh, Mediterranean the Mediterranean people can be so that was one uh, one challenge um, and I would say that another big challenge that I've met is the um, finding my place in the in the professional world um, I was a teacher for 15 years a bit more than that and and I it just it was the easiest thing for me to do in a way my father was a teacher my mother became a teacher also um, uh, later in her career my grandparents were teachers so it's like you know you have it in the blood and if there's anything that i can do that i know like you know it's it's teaching i've i've grown up with it so um, so i became a teacher a bit because i didn't have any other really idea of what to do, um, and it took me some time to find my place in in the professional world to find out what I really want to do and what really what drives me really, what motivates me, and and also afterwards to find my place as a therapist. Um, for a long time, I I was hoping that I could get a job 
uh, in an institution or in in a kind of um, um, I don't know maybe in healthcare or but and and it took me some time to realize that if I really want to have the job that I want and that I that would be good for me I need to be my own boss actually so but that's um, that, that was challenging. Uh, it's challenging still so it's uh, it's another part of the professional challenge now that i'm facing the part of uh, uh, being an auto entrepreneur and having to do um because when you're an auto entrepreneur you have to do all the parts of the job you have to be your own accountant you have to be your own pr you have to mm -hmm. be your you, the therapist and uh, it's it's really um uh, multifaceted in a way so uh, but it's but it's a good challenge it's a challenge that I'm uh, that I'm embracing because I've uh, I've also chose it mm -hmm. and then I, I that's, that that's last... actually missing in a lot of trainings is helping people figure out what to do with this after they're mm -hmm. trained with the skill set Yes, well, I think that's that's one of the good things that we've had at the um, at the Gestalt School in Oslo because we have been speaking about uh, how to be practically a therapist and have, and driving no, doing having our own practice. Oh. So uh, I do have a feeling that we have at least we started at least a reflection on that when we were at the school. So that helped a bit, but of course it wasn't as deep as you might need it when you hmm. really oh that's good though most a lot of places leave that as a complete mystery hmm. so that's exciting uh -huh. to hear yeah well i mean i've i've had to find out a lot of a, a lot of things by myself afterwards but uh i do think that um we had a reflection for example about uh, how about the kind of prices that we want to have for our services you know um, we had a reflection about the vision that we have for our company and things like that. So that was really, uh, that set at least some, some basic stuff for the, mm -hmm. for the foundation of the company. So that was um, my practice. So that was, yeah, I'm thankful to have had that at least. Mm -hmm. hmm. So what come to mind as some highlights so far? I mean, I know that you're sort of in the early stages, but I, I'd like to, I mean, you can talk about any part of your life if you want to talk about a different kind of highlight, but I'm also interested in some gestalt highlights, either in training or in your own process or as a therapist. Um, well, for me as a therapist, the biggest highlight that I've had um, is definitely uh, finding out that I'm gifted and finding out that I want to work with gifted people. Um, as a digital therapist um, because it put a lot of things in place for me first as a person and and then as a therapist um, so that happened like two years ago I found out when I was discussing with my uh, siblings that um, um, yes so um I found out um, yeah, about two years ago that I was uh, gifted and it, it opened up a whole new perspective uh, for me, actually. Um, it explained a lot of the reasons why I was uh, seeing uh, things the way I was. And it explained also a lot of things that I was uh, experiencing in my life. And then I realized that um, most of the clients that are coming to me are also gifted and that they are actually the clients that I'm most comfortable working with. Uh, and when I started studying giftedness with uh, some um, therapists who are not Gestalt therapists, but um, psychologists, then um, I realized why, because we are usually when we work at the same pace in a way and when we are at the same level, then we understand each other better. So uh, when I discovered that, then I realized that, okay, I, I need to focus on these people mostly because these are the people that I'm most able to help um, and in, in, in the best way for them and for me somehow. And when I started working really, or at least um, 
giving a focus to that in my practice, then it started uh, a new dynamic um, appeared in in my practice and um, I saw a new type of clients coming to me also. So when I started working differently with them also. So that was really um, that was really an interesting, um, interesting moment. So I'm not I'm not taking only gifted uh, clients, but mm -hmm. very often the ones who come to me are gifted and they don't know it because we don't talk much about it in Norway. It's not a topic which is very um, uh, talked about. And uh, because they, here is the culture of cutting the tall poppy short. Mm -hmm. So uh, giftedness is um, for children and it's only, you know, mathematics and sciences and stuff like that. It just doesn't exist otherwise. So, <laughs> so starting to talk about a bit about this, but what, yeah. what does it mean for you to be in that and working with that? What are you um, well, it means for me that, uh, first of all, I have to educate people about this topic and especially adults, because very often they don't know uh, what it means and they don't know they don't know what it means also as far as the challenges that they meet in their everyday life actually um, so I'm I'm um, trying to educate people more about that topic and especially adults because I have um, a focus on uh, adults giftedness and um, and also we are we are when I work with my clients in a gestalt way we are also incorporating the, um, the knowledge about giftedness and, and keeping a focus on, on the fact that some things happen in their life, not because there's something wrong with them, but just because they have another way of seeing the world or of perceiving the world in a way. So, yeah. Hmm. I, so I really think that's the highlight. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I, I'm realizing I didn't ask you a question that I usually ask at the beginning, which is odd. I mean, I've only done this like 150 times and I still don't know the question. Um, I didn't ask you, and now I'm curious about the way that you're sort of framing it within that slightly differentness. I'm wondering what comes to mind as a particular event or as a set of circumstances in your life that has really influenced you or shaped you in some way? I mean, it might be the immigration, maybe that is something you already talked about, but I'm wondering if there's a specific moment of awareness. Um, I'd say that um, the, the moment that really shaped me is actually before the immigration. It's the moment, the first time I came to Norway on holidays by myself. I was then um, 15, if I remember uh, right. And I was uh, coming to Norway on a language trip. So I was supposed to stay in Norway for two months with the family who the woman was American. And the goal for that trip was just to speak English actually, to, to practice my English. And when I, when I spent those two months um, in Norway, it was like a revelation. To me, actually, um, I discovered people who were living in a, in a way, quite a similar way to the way I was living, but still there were different things. Um, the people that I was living with didn't have any TV, for example. And I thought that was wonderful, actually. And I realize now why it was wonderful to me, because I, um, I'm hypersensitive. And I have especially uh, sounds are really, um, I'm very sensitive to sounds. And I realized that there was a silence in that house that was actually very good for me because I, I've grown up with a father who had uh, the radio or the TV on almost all the time. And, um, and I, I didn't realize until that time what this noise was doing to me actually. But it's only years later, like two years uh, ago, that I really understood how that uh, that I had a, an awareness and a consciousness about how that affected me and why I why I was affected by that so much. Um, but also, I discovered during that trip that um, it felt good for me to be in another country. Actually, it felt good for me to um, there was a kind of safety of. Uh, about speaking a language that wasn't mine and meeting people, um, new people. And I realized also uh, two years ago that it's probably 
in partly due to the fact that I'm gifted as well and that I've never felt really, um, I've never belonged when I was in France and coming to another country gave me a good reason of not belonging because I was anyway different. I wasn't from there, you know? So it's made easier the fact that I felt that, that it was difficult to find my place because I, in no way I had a good reason to not find my place that easily. I wasn't from there, but in France, I should have found my place easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm smiling. I have a lot of similarities there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a Canadian thing, right? It's, that's, that's why I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> i'll just blame the country of origin for my differences <laughs> yes yeah, it's it's a really excellent strategy actually it makes a lot of sense it is it is and and it was really an eye-opener for me when i when i realized that because mm -hmm. uh, i mean i i could have you know in a way i was surprised that i took it so nicely because um i could have i could have thought that it was um um that then I, I left Norway for the wrong reason, but no. Or I left France, I mean, not Norway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm glad I went back to that. That was a very interesting piece. So the last question that I really have is what's next for you? And I'm sure there's a lot of next because you're developing things, um, but I'm also wondering what you see as next for Gestalt in the times and the world that we're living in. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what's next for me is uh, keeping on building my practice and I'm hoping to have a solid full-time practice quite soon. Um, I would also like very much to um, share more with the Norwegian Gestalt therapists um, my knowledge about giftedness and how it can be uh, supporting their own clients to know more about giftedness and adult giftedness. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that still, but uh, I have a feeling that, um, um, I, I mean, I, I like to inspire people and I like to share the knowledge that I have with other people. And that, um, that thing about giftedness is really definitely something that I would like to, to transmit and to give away and to share with other people to, um, because I think it it would um, it would be helpful for many of the Norwegian clients actually to um, if Gestalt therapists and other therapists for that matter um, knew more about that topic. So I think that's going to be um, one of the tracks that I'm going to follow in the next years. And as far as Gestalt therapy uh, in itself is concerned, I'm not sure how to answer that question because. Um, um, I also think or feel that um, uh, the time that we're going through right now is a time where it's a bit difficult to, to think about the future in a way. Um, I feel that we are very anchored in what's happening right here and right now because there is so much uncertainty about what's coming um, in the future and especially um, there is more and more uncertainty coming with the with the days that are coming actually six months ago we thought that everything would be open again uh, in six months time and now it looks like maybe everything will still be closed until the end of 2021 you know um but i do think that the challenges that many people are facing these days are actually unfortunately good for psychotherapy and for gestalt therapy because many are having a very hard time um, are faced with isolation and faced with maybe their own fears and their own loneliness and uh, the lack of contact and i think that's that's one of the things that maybe will make them turn towards psychotherapy and gestalt therapy so in a way it will be it will be good for Gestalt therapy to be uh, a bit more known. I don't know how it is in Mexico, but in, in Norway, it's still, Gestalt therapy is still very much seen as a kind of uh, alternative uh, treatment. It's, it's, people don't think so much that any psychologist can actually use Gestalt therapy um, in a purposeful way, actually. 
Um, so many, many people, when we talk about Gestalt therapy, they don't know what it is and they ask us if we do crystal stuff and, uh, you know, so, <laughs> so we need to educate also people here about what Gestalt therapy is actually. So, um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, Gestalt therapy is also like everything. Everything is always evolving in the world. So maybe Gestalt therapy will be evolving into something new someday. Who knows, but uh, might not be so soon. So yeah, I think I think we have the the unique situation that I mean, Gestalt has the introduction of novelty built into our basic tenets and our structure. Yes, so I think there's that inherent ability and curiosity to adapt. Yes, uh, and I mean, we certainly are breaking some fixed Gestalts, whether we want to or not. Mm. Can't just keep doing things the same way anymore. So. Absolutely. Interesting. Interesting to see where we end up. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you would like to add at this point? Is there anything that you think I'm missing about you? Uh, no, really, I don't think so. I think uh, I've given a good, um, maybe short picture or snapshot of uh, mm -hmm. who I am in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, well, I, I feel like I've sat down and met you. So if it's okay with you, um, should we leave it here? Yes, thank you very much okay. for having me. Thank you. <laughs>